What's happening guys? It is Brian Olsen with NerveState.com and I'm sitting next to David Lee. So without David Lee, he was absolutely the very first member of Never State Athletics. If it were not for this guy, I would never have started a gym. I would never have gotten involved in Strongman. There wouldn't be a YouTube channel. None of this would have been possible. So this is going to be a little bit different of a format. I'm just going to sit down and it's two guys talking. So pull up a chair. This is just like you guys. There's not going to be much fancy editing. We're just telling you guys the story of how all of this got started. Dave's story, he's got some absolutely amazing things coming up in his life. So I know it's gonna be a little bit different of a video, but this guy is one of the most positive people I've ever met, one of my favorite people in the entire world, and has become one of my best friends. So we're gonna get into this whole story, Dave's story, the Never State story, and just see where it goes. We're not completely sure yet, but it's gonna be good. All right. All right, so, so very first thing, Dave, so very, okay. So first thing, Dave, thanks so much. Thank Dave, you. It's awesome. It's funny, we do things like that. Uh, but yeah, there, there we go. We do things like this, uh, but literally I see this guy every single day of my life. So the whole like, thanks for doing this, Dave. Like, <laughs> I, I do appreciate you doing this, but this, this is what we do, right? Um, so before he was involved with me, Dave was actually Mike Jenkins. If you guys don't know who Mike Jenkins is, he is strongman royalty, one of the best people that I've ever met in my entire life, and probably one of the best strongmen I've ever met in my entire life. Uh, we went to high school together, and I actually used to train at a gym with Mike, and Dave was actually training at the same gym as well. When I ended up leaving to go do some other stuff, Mike was your personal trainer. So why don't you tell a little story about how you and Mike got involved with each other, and where you guys went with everything, and Absolutely. It was 2007. I had joined the gym and uh, I used to train early in the morning. The gym opened at 6. I was usually there at 6 a.m. early. And uh, just one day I see this guy walk in at uh, about 6. And uh, I can remember like it was yesterday because he was wearing a beanie cap and it was hot outside. And I, I thought that was a little odd. But, yeah. you know, he was, he was a very impressive looking individual. And uh, he would train and I would train. And I didn't really meet him. But, uh, I had heard through the grapevine at the gym that he had uh, gotten his personal training uh, certificate. Yep. And um, after that, uh, I happened to just, I was doing something one day and he just walked up to me and I just saw this like, like this shadow <laughs> this on, ball on, of on, on the right side of me and he, he just said, um, he just kind of gave me instruction on what I was doing. Yeah. And uh, I put my hand out and met him and uh, he said, I'm Mike Jenkins. Uh, and I'm a, uh, I'm a personal trainer. And I said, really? I said, you looking for any clients? And he goes, yeah. And I said, well, I'm actually looking to uh, get some instruction on some stuff, so sign me up. And then that's how it happened, like literally that fast. And he was just like, kind of dumbfounded. <laughs> first set, first so set. He, he like kind of waddled away and came back with his phone number and said, give me a call and we'll get set up. So that's how it began. That's I, uh, awesome. I uh, signed up with him and we would train at 6 a.m. And um, we did it for about uh, for about four to six months um, at that gym. Then he moved to another gym, and I followed him over there. And we did that for a little while until he stopped doing it altogether. And um, it was uh, it was great. We forged a, a fantastic friendship uh, during that time. Probably after knowing him for just a couple of months, he told me that he was thinking about signing up for Maryland's Strongest Man. Yep. And uh, I said, well. That, that'd be great, be able to do it. And uh, Mike was, at the time, he had been released from football and he was just this guy in excellent shape, kind of with nothing to do. Yeah. You know, he Working trained, out like a maniac though. Absolutely, Man. excellent shape. He was about 320 pounds, um, just really lean and mean, yep. in excellent shape. So um, he signed up for Maryland's Strongest Man and uh, we, we went down there and watched him and stuff and he won. Yep. And I had told him prior to the contest, I said, listen, if you win, um, what's next? And he said, well, if I win, I qualify and I go to Vegas for the Nationals. Yep. And I said, well, if you win, I'll pay your way to Nationals. And I'll go too. Right. So I don't really know if he believed me or not, but anyway, he went, he won Maryland's. And uh, the very next morning when he went to, when we went to train together, I gave him a I gave him a check and I said, let's go to Vegas. And, and he was just like, he couldn't believe it. He, he actually came back to me and said, are you sure you want to do this? And I said, I'm positive. So uh, myself and my wife went and Mike and his mom went to Vegas. And uh, for Mike's first uh, national, he came in third place. 
he would have come in probably a lot higher. He was just very green to the sport. Yeah. And um, just afterwards, he had tons of people. I remember Nick Best walking up to him saying, man, once you learn how to do a couple of these things, you are gonna be awesome. Yeah. You really need to stick with this. I was standing right there when that conversation took place. So it was really cool. Yeah. It was really cool. You guys ended up going to Worlds together, to the Arnold together. Yeah, actually I didn't go to the Arnold. Uh, I didn't, I, it's funny. I never went to the ones he won. Right. For some reason, I was never there when he won and it was kind of like a running joke. You know, I tell, I tell him, I said, listen, I'm not gonna be able to go. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you're set. You're set. Yeah. Um, but I was there in Arkansas for his first uh, professional competition. He came in second place and uh, it was just, uh, uh, you know, we, he and I were really, really um, close friends. There was so much more to Mike than just the strong man. Yeah. He, was, he was just a very, he was a kind, compassionate man and uh, rooted for the underdog. Um, he, was just, he was just a really great guy. I miss him every day. Yeah, me too, man. Um, so fast forward, I guess, probably a couple years. It was a couple years. Mike had moved up to PA to start his own gym. So he was running his own gym with his wife, Carrie, and uh, they were doing very, very well. Mike continued with his competitive career and stuff like that. And then somehow my wife got involved with your wife in personal training. So my wife was a personal trainer and your wife was training. Um, so they became personal, personal friends and were working together. And then well, I, my wife and I were looking for a house and Dave owns a lot of property. So we met up with you and uh, you were talking about renting us a house and you were going to have this big Christmas party and Mike was going to come to the Christmas party. And so you invited me. You were like, yeah, I've seen Mike for a couple of years. You guys will get together. And uh, you had talked to me about maybe getting involved in straw man. Like the very first time that I ever met this guy, we were, I remember we were sitting in your car and uh, driving to driving somewhere, and, and you said, have you ever thought about competing? And I was like, I don't know, I, I don't know if that's for me, or whatever. And uh, you were like, well, if you do it, I'll pay your entry fee, let's go. And uh, so I kind of felt like I didn't, I didn't have a choice at that point. So uh, I, I kind of was like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. And just kind of went on, because I, I didn't know you, I didn't know what you were about, and for those of you uh, who are new to meeting Dave, when Dave says he's going to do something, he does it. There, he's not, it's such a rare quality in this world, and one of the ones I appreciate most about you, okay. is that if you say, I'm gonna show up with this water bottle at 4 a.m. and I will be there, you are there with the water bottle 100% of the time. You never let people down, that is so huge. Um, but anyway, uh, so now I'm, I'm talking about getting involved in a thing and we're gonna go to a Christmas party so that Mike and I catch up and I think you were kind of like, Mike will probably help convince you towards a strong man yeah, world. Yeah, I was, I was much looking forward to this, this kind of like this great reunion because yeah. I, I, I didn't know you very well, but yep. you know, we had talked and you know, yep. and, and had some conversations and, I, and of course I called Mike and told him that listen, Mike always came to my Christmas parties yep. and, and it, it didn't matter what was going on in his life, he came to my Christmas parties and yep. um, I told him, I said, listen, talk to Brian Osru, Brian's coming. And he said, really? Wow. And so, you know, but everybody was looking forward to seeing each other. It was yeah. going to be a great time. Um, unfortunately, um, Thanksgiving 2013, uh, you know, Mike passed away and uh, just kind of redirected everything. And, you know, we both kind of, I just remember seeing you and talking to you at his funeral and it, and it was just like, you know, we both were feeling the same thing yeah. and it was, it was just a very strange feeling. And, um, but, uh, you know, um, we, we, uh, we moved forward and, uh, I just, we, we started talking about kind of our collaboration and absolutely. And, uh, it was, I think Mike will always be a part of what we do. 100%. He's on the wall. His yeah, brother trains here. Absolutely. Just. Absolutely. He's always going to be there. Absolutely. But it was pretty funny because after, after the funeral, which was, that was a, that was a kick in the stomach. That, that was rough. Um, but it was cool because like all the top straw men in the entire world showed up to Mike's funeral. Uh, which says a lot about Mike, because there's a lot of competitors who do not like each other, don't get along, 
everyone got yeah. along. Like, and they traveled a long ways to get there. Yeah, people flew in from other countries to be at this funeral. It was, it was absolutely astounding to see the love that surrounded this guy. Yeah. But I guess it was probably, um, it was that winter, so it, it had to be December, January type of time. Um, because Mike died in November, and then you and I, you guys came over to our house for dinner one night, mm -hmm. and Dave and I were just throwing around ideas, and you were like, you know, I, I would like to get a training program, so I actually wrote my very first personalized program for you, mm. and then, uh, I still have it. And you, <laughs> you went away, uh, to the gym that you were working at, because this gym did not exist. You, you were working out your gym and doing stuff, and you'd send me, like, little little snippets of, of clips of you like I remember of you jumping up onto a uh, jump box holding a medicine ball and I was just so proud and you were I, I'll be honest I didn't know as much about progression and uh, how things should go back then when I did that program so you just got slammed I like did. there was I did. I, I remember uh, the very first day after that dinner, um, yeah. you said to me, you said, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email you a program. Um, sure enough, one or two days later, it arrived, I printed it off, and, you know, and now actually you printed it off for me. You had it organized for me, yeah. and I remember that. And I just remember, like, flipping through it and just, like, wow, this is, this is interesting. <laughs> this is interesting. And it was so interesting because I had never done a lot of the things yeah. in there. So what the first thing I had to do is figure it out, yep. you know, what various things were, like what, what is a plank? Yep. Uh, what is a Curtis P? And, <laughs> and, 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 and figure out all these things. And once I figured them out, I just simply jumped in and started doing them. And I trained by myself. I show up at 6 a.m. and I just did it by the letter. Just, just yep. started at the top and worked my way through it. I, I couldn't get through the, the workouts. Um, it actually took me several months of training before I actually got through the workouts. Yep. And um, it was actually the second set of programs that you wrote for me yep. to where I could complete them. A lot changed in that period of time. Um, I found myself, uh, I started dropping weight and I started to really just not, you know, getting stronger, but other things that I've never done before, like front squats and yeah. some of these other exercises that I've never done before, suddenly I'm starting to be able to get stronger in them and, um, dare I say, enjoy them a little bit. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, it was, uh, it was cool. It was definitely a transformation. People used to come up to me and uh, once, in a, once in a while on some of the, some of the uh, intense um, conditioning, now I'm training by myself and I'm doing it one after the other after the other. My heart rate would get up so high, I would start to get some anxiety. And yeah. literally, I would just walk out, walk out the front door and stand there. And I remember people coming out to me saying, are you okay? And I'd say, yeah, I just need to cool off a little bit. And they'd say, yeah, I've noticed for the last month or two, you, you do this a lot. Are, are you uh, sure you're okay? And I said, yeah. I'm fine, I'm fine. But I was doing my own thing. Yeah. I, I would actually go into a room where there was nobody around. So I could do, train uh, your program without interruption. I did not want people bothering me. And yeah. um, after a while, people stopped bothering me. You know, they yeah. realized that I was working towards something. Like, that, that guy's, that guy's going to kill himself, but. Yeah, <laughs> it was cool because I, what I found is I got out early too. I got done yeah. early. Yeah, you know, It Absolutely. really didn't take that long. And um, so, yeah, uh, that was, uh, that was years ago. I'm still doing it today. Loving every minute of it. Yep. So after, after that happened, after that dinner where we did the programs, it was a couple months because it was a couple months for the programming. And I remember again, sitting down at my house with you and being like, I told Mike that I was going to sign up for a competition at his funeral. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link a video to how I got involved with Strongman that, that lays out a little bit more. But I remember turning to you and be like, I think I'm going to do a competition. I remember. And we signed up and I got involved in Strongman. But also at that, it, at that same conversation, I turned to you and said, I'm thinking about starting my own thing. I'm thinking about maybe figuring out how to do a gym. And, and you said as much, these conversations have a lot with us where you'll throw out an idea or I'll throw out an idea. And the other one's always like, I was kind of thinking the same thing. Like what, what were your ideas? So um, I was throwing out the idea of perhaps starting my own thing. And, and you were like, well, let's, let's start looking into buildings. Let's start getting involved. And originally we were just gonna build, I think it was like 
I like 24 by 24. 24 by 24 little garage so that I could start training you and a couple other people personally, just almost like personal training. Um, and then as we started to keep talking about it, you had this other property, which is the property that you guys see on all these videos um, that had a lot more land. And so we were like, maybe we want to go a little bit bigger, see how this is. So we, we ended up building a building. But before that, every single Sunday, we only held one workout a week. And it was like Sundays at like 1130, right? And, Always hot. And by this time, I had done my, my first competition, which was in April. So this was like summertime. But I had ordered a bunch of equipment and uh, the guys building the building were actually a little behind schedule. So I ordered a ton of equipment and had it sitting, a bunch of rogue stuff, like thousands, thousands of dollars of rogue stuff sitting in my driveway, right? And that year it rained a ridiculous amount. So I had like a tarp over this stuff and it was just pouring and the guys with the building were just like, yeah, it's gonna start next week. Next week we'll come and go. It's gonna start next week. Next week we'll come and go. So every single week, we would drive out to this property in the middle of this field, and I would, in my Jeep, I'd be driving kettlebells and barbells and all kinds of stuff out of a yoke. We brought a yoke here. Um, we, were, we were setting it all up, and we'd work out for like an hour in the midday sun, in, in the, the grass. Middle, in the grass, middle of Maryland, humid summer, and there were never such brutal workouts ever because again i didn't really know what i was doing in a group personal training setting so i would just be like well i know people like to get a good workout so i'm going to give them a great workout which in spanish means horrendously hard workout right so uh you know like anywhere from like four to like ten people would show up to these field workouts and we'd work out and i'd pack all the stuff back in my jeep drive it home and uh, until the building actually got built. Yeah. And yeah. then once the building got built, we, uh, we started holding classes here. I can still remember like, uh, before we even had rubber mats and things like that, we were in here deadlifting, remember, with Absolutely. like a little Beats pill playing music. And, Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yep. It was, uh, it was interesting. The, 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 the grass workouts, I remember them, uh, it just, for some reason, it just seemed like every Sunday we did it. Yep. It, we usually started about 1130. It was always hot. And, um, it was neat because people would. That's when people would start. New people would come in and yeah. show up, and uh, um, it was it was it was neat. It some of the really, people really never neat. came back. A lot of them never came back. Some of them, <laughs> some of them got sick outside. And yeah. It was it was it was interesting. Yeah. It was interesting. It was, it was an amazing time. And now, now here we are. What? So that that was August, two thousand fourteen is when the building got complete. So that whole summer we were doing these outside workouts. And then once the building got built, we started yeah, we adding moved, things and moved inside and start, got busy inside. Eventually, it's just been a little piece of equipment here, a little addition, growing, 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 mm -hmm. until here we are in 2017. And now we're going to do an extension on the building to literally more than double our footprint, uh, which we're both super excited about. It's going to be uh, it's going to be an amazing time. But honestly, if it were not for this man none of this would have happened. I, I would not have done a strongman competition. I would not have started my own gym. I would not. So, I mean, we've been through this whole rocky and stressful world together. It's just been, it's been amazing. We've built an awesome friendship. We've just... Yeah, and we're just getting started. Just we, we, have a lot, started. we have a lot more to do. It's, it's, it's a, and, and I, I give you uh, so much of the credit because you are the one that drives this whole thing. Um, it's interesting when uh, when we started. I there was I, I was having some a actual anxiety about having to train with you. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I remember when I was doing the workouts when you wrote me the programs. I, I used to just run through my mind. Sooner or later, I'm going to be face to face with this guy. Yeah. I got to be ready for it. And that was such a that was such a driving force for me to get through those programs and stuff. And uh, you know when we started our classes and so on and so forth. I was much more equipped to jump right in and get started uh, had I not done those, uh, got an early start with the programs. Yep. So and cool. so, so you were, you were 48, you said, when, mm -hmm. when we built the building yes. and we got started. Yes. Um, and I know some of our viewers here are a little bit further into their lifting career and some people are just getting started, but you were 48 pretty much when you started this. Now you had done some lifting before and you had hit some 
some decent numbers, but when you started here, when we started the building, you were probably at about a 365 deadlift. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, everything, um, my, my deadlift, squat. Squat um, was we're, we're, in the twos we're, somewhere. High twos, yeah, yeah high just, twos. just never, never, uh, uh, never did real well with that. The only thing that I always was pretty strong with was the bench press. Yeah. Um, I, I did that earlier in life and stuff. I had a pretty good bench press. Um, but um, yeah, the other lifts, no, hadn't, hadn't really, uh, I, I just would plateau and, and just literally stay there. Right. So just couldn't seem to, just couldn't seem to get anywhere with those numbers. But we did sit down and talk about your goals and you were like, by the time I'm 50, I want to deadlift 500 pounds, I want to squat 405, I want to overhead press 225. And we started 48 with a deadlift of 365 and a squat in the high twos, probably like somewhere between 275 and 300, somewhere around that. Mm -hmm. And by the time you we were 50, all of those things were crossed off. Yeah, yep, hit, hit the, uh, the, the 500 pound deadlift was the biggest one for me. That's the yeah. one that I, I, I just, but anytime you add, a, take off the change and put a large plate on, yep. it changes everything. Yep. Um, and uh, I remember like it was yesterday, I, I training up towards it uh, throughout our programming, uh, your programming, we were working the percentages and I just started to notice that I'm getting stronger, I can feel it. And um, um, I, I wanted to try 500, but I wanted to wait. I didn't want to miss it. Yeah. Um, so there was just one day we were, uh, we were doing PRs and it was uh, kind of towards the end of a program. And you said on that day, you said, guys, if you feel it, today's your day, go for it. Yeah. You know, if you're feeling it today, load up and, uh, and try PR, and, and that particular day, I actually got two PRs because I, I hit 475 for the first time. Which was a PR. Which was a PR, and um, you just know yep. that there's more, and I just said, today's my day, and I remember I, I put it on, and you said, 500? I said, 500, and, yep. uh, and got it. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was cool, it was cool. And I, I, can, I was videotaping you, and I can remember saying, you are my hero. Yes. I and that was that. awesome. I remember that. Yeah. I, it, I still, still to that this too. day, any PRs that I've hit, any PRs anyone else has hit, nothing compares to that one moment. Yeah. It was interesting. I, I watched that video um, a couple of times and I, I, you know, it's interesting when you, when you watch the video and you're, you know, you're 50 years old and, and you're, and you're, and you're deadlifting and the bar's bending. Yeah, I just remember thinking that is the coolest thing. Yeah, I never thought I, I never thought I'd get to that point where I'm doing a deadlift and the bar is actually bending. In your entire life, you never thought 500 was going to happen. Yeah. Especially you start getting a little older. Yeah, you start going like where I'm at right now. I'm starting to say like, is this as good as it's ever going to be? Mm -hmm. Like hit that 405 overhead press. I was like, am I ever going to hit 410? Am I? I'm pretty sure I'm never going to hit 495. So yeah. this is probably the last plate I'm ever going to put on. Yeah, and you so you start thinking like that. Mm -hmm. But you, you completely blew all those numbers out of water. Yeah, it was, it was interesting because I was doing it late in life, you know. Yep. I mean, later, I, later, later, later. But, right. you know, the, by the world's terms, it's late in life. Yeah. I don't think it's late in life. No. I feel like I'm just keep no. going. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, I, I just, it's just interesting how when you train your whole body and you train it properly, the whole body works together. Yep. And I think the deadlift encapsulates that whole thing when you're, you're using your whole body and when you make the whole body strong when you call upon it to do something it's going to be there yep and uh, so yeah that and you you've mentioned about about my programming that Dave's always super nice to me like we're always super nice to each other but there's been times after the fact where he's been like yeah when we were doing that I didn't really know why we were doing that. I, I was doing it going, this doesn't make any sense. No. This isn't going to work. I know me and I know it works for me. This isn't going to work. And then, you know, three months later, we're standing on NPR. But we actually at the gym referred to Dave as the Godfather. Whenever someone new was coming in, we're like, that's Dave. He's Godfather. What Godfather wants, the Godfather gets. <laughs> like, and it's, it's just because you have done so much. Because I, it, I don't know if it will come across in this video, but you are literally one of the most positive people I've ever met in my entire life. Like, your house could burn down and you'd be like, well, it was warm for a little bit. Like, like you can you can always find the good in it. Yeah, we're and alive. We're alive, yeah. exactly. And yeah. 
doing amazing things. We're going to get a little bit more into that in just a minute. Mm -hmm. But uh, do you have any advice that you would give people who are getting involved in this game a little later in life or just further along their stage? Like somebody, somebody who's 48 yelling, I really want to try strong, man, but I don't think it's, I think it's too late for me. You know what I mean? Well, it's not too late. Um, I, I can tell you that if you're, regardless of your age, <clears throat> The one thing I would tell you, if you are approaching 50, um, it's good to, before you get started, to get some instruction. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have experience doing various lifts, deadlift, squat, bench press, overhead press, uh, get some instruction. Yeah. If you've hurt yourself, uh, most people I talk to my age, when I tell them what I do, they say, oh boy, whew, man, I, I tore myself up in my uh, early 20s, or I tore myself up in college doing something. Well. You know, most of the time when you have you hear those stories, and I did it myself, you were doing something wrong. Yeah. So just correct it, and yep. there's a real good chance it won't happen again. But um, I would say to people, to, to get started, to get instruction, and get a program. Yep. Get a program. Know what you're doing, um, and you you have to train your whole body. You know, so so many times I think the reason why I was never good at squatting, I was never good at deadlifting, is because I didn't like doing either one of them. Right. So I didn't do it. So even when I lifted weights in my early 20s, I stayed away from that stuff because I didn't like it. Right. Well, the reason I didn't like it is I was doing it wrong and it made me hurt. Yeah. So back then, um, with no wisdom, no instruction, I just said, well, I'll just do bench press and do other things, arm curls, stuff that I like doing that feels good. And I just shelved the other lifts. Just don't do that. Get started, figure out what you're doing wrong, train your whole body. I mean, from everything. Yeah, and and there's a lot of people who get a program from me, and they're like, "This, I didn't sign up for this yeah. type idea, mm -hmm. just like you did." Yeah. But if you truly want to make progress, you can't continually do what you like doing or Absolutely. what you're good at. You need to get out of your comfort zone, and you're going to hate it at first. But I can tell you, it's just like the workouts that were out in that field where just some beating down on us, and people throwing up, and people ready to pass out, like. You look back on those times in your life where you were being stretched and you were doing things and you look back on them so positively when you're going through it, you're like, I don't, what am I doing with my life? Why am I doing this to myself? I, I hurt, I don't, what? but two years after the fact, you're looking back going, man, that was the building blocks for everything. So some people buy, buy programs, they'll be like, well, I don't want to do the conditioning. The conditioning's there for a purpose. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. If it, and I'm not saying you need to buy a program for me, but find a coach that you trust, look at what he has done for other people or she has done for other people, figure out what they can offer you and be very selective about who you choose. But once you do find that person, hold on to them and follow what they say because they probably have been in the game a little bit longer and there have been many times, so many times, where you've come up to me and been like, something's wrong. I, I, 300 pounds on deadlift felt horrendous today, right? But then I'll turn to you and be like, remember, like, I've been there, trust me, you're just, your CNS is down, you're, you're gonna be fine, trust me, and then you come back and get it. And conversely, how many times have I come up to you and been like, blah, 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 stuff is terrible, blah, you can't believe this, because I get very upset when I'm not doing well. And, uh, and you're always like, remember? Yeah. You've been here before. Here, here. Yeah, exactly, 100%. And I can honestly say, there are a handful of people, literally three that I can think of right now, who have seen me at my literal worst when it comes to beating myself up. And it's almost always at nationals. And, uh, and you are always one of those people. And so now, before you would try to like, try to, if I've come off and have messed something up, you're like, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, until you've had enough times of me being like, it's not gonna be okay, like freaking out. Yeah, I'd and say uh, the next, so let's focus on the next event. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, and I can't tell you how many times I've walked up to this man and at nationals, I will mess something up, or at a competition, I will mess something up, and I'll walk over to Dave, and now we both know silence. Like, we're both just gonna, I need to be near him, because he needs, like, it's, it's comforting for me to be around him, right? But now we both know neither one of us talks about it and we both just stand there. Like, I'll walk back and there's no, like, good job. There's no, 
You mess that one up, it's just silence. And we're both just like... Yeah, it's a mutual understanding. This is where we're at right now. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, I, I want to transition into reinventing yourself. So, like we were talking about before, most people, once they hit about the age of 40, mm -hmm. they're like, okay, I've done all the great things I'm going to do in my life. Uh, it's time for me to kind of settle down into my later years, kind of cruise, watch watch my kids grow or my whatever whatever's going to happen, my business grow or, or whatever the case may be. Most people, by the time that they are around that mid-age type of level, they're set in their ways. They're not interested in trying new things. They're not, you tell, if I ask certain people in my life if they want to try sushi, they're like, ah, I'm not eating raw food, you know what I mean? Um, you are completely opposite. Since I've known you, you are a father, you're a husband, you're a friend, you are a business owner, you are a property owner, you are an auctioneer, you have done, which you were not an auctioneer even up to like a year and a half ago, um, but you decided that was something you want to do and you went and did it. You have done 100 mile bike races, like pedal bike races. You have done numerous. So for those of you who don't know, a 100 mile bike race is challenging for people who do nothing but bike racing. You know what I mean? If you are an older individual who deadlifts 500 pounds, most people are going to look at you and say, maybe that 100 mile bike race isn't, isn't where you want to yeah. be. And you're sitting on a seat about the size of this. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun at about mile two, much less mile 99. But you have, you've done every single, every single year, you have taken something new and said, this year I want to do this. You know what I mean? And uh, that is that is such a massive thing that I want to continue throughout my life. Like always not being afraid of stretching myself, jumping out of my comfort zone. So, um, like I said, you've done strongman competitions, pilots competitions, after the age of 50, all kinds of things that you have been willing to step out and do. And now, this year, the reason why we're sitting down right now at this time is because we're running out of time because you have a huge thing coming up. So you want to tell people about this? Yeah. This is amazing. Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I've always, uh, I've always ridden uh, dirt bikes throughout my life and I've always, I've loved it. I've, I've I used to uh, race motocross from time to time and some hair scrambles and stuff, but I'm, I'm, uh, next week I'm picking up and rolling out and I'm going to hit the, it's called the Trans America Trail. It's a trail that starts in, uh, uh, Andrews, North Carolina, and runs clear to Portland, Oregon, uh, off road. <laughs> and uh, it's going to take me a month. I'm going to cover about 4,500 miles, and um, I can't wait. I've been I've been thinking about it for I've been thinking about it for three years. Started getting serious about it a year ago, and uh, made up my mind six months ago that I'm doing it. And so now it's. It's a lot of, yeah. You've yeah. got your like satellite phone, you've got your, yeah, all your I'm, stuff. I'm all set up, I'm, you know, I'm doing it by myself, which, you know, a lot of people will say yeah, it's not a good idea, but I can't find anybody to deal with me. It's, it's, I understand a lot of people can't get away from work and get sure. away from family for a month. Um, so, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to not do it because of that. I mean, I would certainly like to take somebody along with me, but I'll be fine. I'm, I'm not going to, uh, um, uh, head into something that uh, I, I'm not prepared to deal with. And if we're being honest about it, there's a lot of people who have convenient, oh, I can't because of this, or I can't because yeah. of that, when in reality there might be a little yeah. fear. Or... Yeah, and you know, it's, it's interesting. We, we, we live in such, we live in a world that is, is so soaked with negativity. Yeah. Um, we're really surrounded by it, and it's very hard to to navigate your way through that, especially earlier in life, because you really don't understand it. You just feel right. like, gosh, every idea I have is a bad idea. Right. Because I, I talk about doing something and, and it's like, boom, it's shot down. Yeah. And sometimes it's a family member, sometimes it's a friend, sometimes it's both. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I look back in life and, I, and in my 20s, I, I was just um, in situations a lot of times where I was surrounded by very negative people and I saw and I, I later in life identified the effect it had on me. So, you know, around the age of 30 or so, you know, late 20s, 30, I kind of identified it and said, you know what, I'm done with that stuff. Yep. I'm done with that stuff. You know, ideas can go bad or good, okay? If they go bad, you'll learn from them. Yep. If they go good, great, it's a success. Yep. It's one or the other. 
It's a win-win either way. Yep. Mistakes are part of life. Yep. You're going to make them. You, you read the biographies of the most successful people in the world. Full of mistakes. They'll tell you. Yep. They'll tell you. So I, I guess I, I live my life um, looking at it as I'm going for it. I'm taking a shot. And I mean, I, I try to, when I'm not sure about something, I try to hook on to somebody who has a positive attitude yep. and talk to them. I try to listen to them. And it's interesting, if, if, if you have an idea, if you have a creative idea and, and people are smacking you down on it, ask them why and see what kind of explanation they give you. Yep. A lot of times they can't explain why. It's just their mind, it's almost like a untreated medical condition. Yeah. They, yeah. They, 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 they can't help it. It's like a disease. It's like a disease. Yeah. Yeah, and I, if I have, I've, I've heard it so many times, you know, well, what if, what if? What if? That's so, so many people like to hit you with that when you, when you propose your, a new idea or something creative you're thinking about. Well, what if this? Or what if that? And it's like, what if it works? Yeah. What if it works? <laughs> and let's talk about that. Yeah. What if it works? How cool would that be? Yeah. And uh, so, you know, if there's one thing, people watching this video, check your friends, check your family, check their attitudes. You know, I'm not saying get rid of all the people in your life that have negative attitudes, because you can't. Yeah. I have a lot of my close personal friends who tend to bear on the negative side, but identify it and be careful with it. Because when you're around it a lot, it does bleed through. Yeah. So so be aware of it and, and look, every day is a new day. Um, be thankful for what you have, not what you don't have. Yeah. And uh, you know, live your dreams. Live your dreams. If it doesn't work the first time, try it again. Wayne Gretzky said the only uh, shot uh, that you're 100% uh, going to miss is the one you don't take. Yeah. And, and I think about that kind of stuff all the time. That's something that you've said to me multiple times throughout my life, or in the past couple years, has always been, you're not going to regret the things that you did do. You're going to regret the things you didn't do. So don't be afraid to take the risk, even if it goes terribly. Even if you're in the middle of a field, yeah, working out like you—that's an experience. That's that's something that you think about how most people are going to spend their vacation, right? And this isn't a vacation for you, but uh, I mean, most people spend their vacation. They're like, oh, let me sit and relax. Whereas you're like, in 2017, I rode a dirt bike across America. Yep. Yep. I've that's also, that's massive. And I've also noticed that in my lifetime, um, if you look at the loudest critics in your life, they're usually the people that do at least. Yeah. I'm they, they they just don't have much going on. Yep. But 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 they like to jaw. It's like crabs in a bucket. Stick a bunch of crabs in the bucket, and if one tries to crawl out, the other crabs will grab them. Absolutely. Because they see them Got them going to escape, and they will pull them right back down. Crabs in a bucket, just keep pulling you down. Absolutely. And you just need to be willing to get above that and just Ab go. Absolutely. That's definitely something that that I have not always had in my life. And meeting you and just seeing the way that you lead your life and the example that you're setting. I mean, Dave has some young daughters. He has a wife. He has a business. He has more responsibility than just about anyone I know. And is still saying, you know what? This is something that is important. I'm setting an example for my daughters. I'm setting an example for my wife. I'm setting an example for my friends. That if you are, if you want to do something, you want to follow your dreams, then you need to go after it and you need to do it. That is an invaluable tool. So many people sit on the side of a baseball field and yell at their kid, living vicariously through them, trying to get them to reach a different level than they ever reached. Why don't you get out and start? doing something so that that kid looks at that and says, well, my dad wanted to ride across, he always talked about riding across America on his, on his dirt bike, but he never did it. Like, yeah, your daughters are gonna be able to say, he went. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, it's interesting. I, I, I talk to a lot of people at, at, my, at my work and a lot of my friends too, and, and I'm sure you've heard this too, where It'll be a guy talking about his son, or he'll say, you know, his son's uh, 18 years old or whatever. It's like, man, I just can't get him away from that television. I just can't get him away from the video games. I just can't get him away from this. And it's like, well, what are you doing? Right. Well, I'm talking about him, not me. It's like, right. well, 
why don't both of you yeah. jump in and do something cool together? Buy, buy some bicycles or, yeah. or go ahead and kick a soccer ball or start lifting weights together, start training together. Get in, lead by example yeah. and, and jump in. Um, the one thing I can say about uh, your gym is I do everything at 50, 51 that somebody at 16 does. Yep. Doesn't matter. I'm not. I'm not immune to the conditioning. I'm not. I don't. I don't get a pass on everything. I do what everybody does. So, um, yeah. Uh, lead by example, and um, you know, hey, we we can make this world a better place. We really Absolutely. can. You know, let's 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 pick up, help each other, lead by example. You know, one more thing I want to touch upon is back to Mike Jenkins. Yep. Um, I think I, I've, I've always tried to be in my life, you know, a gentleman, um, nice guy, uh, tried to be, you know, a good friend to people and an encouragement to people. And Mike was absolutely the same way. And I think that's why he and I hit it off so well. And he was, although he was a massive man, uh, you know, just really strong and, and he had so much compassion for the newbie yeah. in the gym. It was amazing. I watched him on two occasions where some guys were kind of making fun of a guy on a treadmill and uh, they were in earshot. And Mike turned to them and said, he's working on something, leave him alone. He's trying to change something, leave him alone. That's awesome. So you can just imagine these two guys whose lips were quivering after Mike set them straight. That's the type of person Mike was. And you know, I, I another time was we a uh, guy walked in and you know your your typical uh, I don't know what you want to call him, but yeah, a guy in a tank top and stuff. And he walked in and he said, "That's my bench press," and walked away. And of course, there were some other people standing around, and, and most of the people there were younger people. And uh, Mike heard it, so he was actually training me at the time. He told me just to do something. He went and grabbed the 150 dumbbells off the rack and set them on the bench press. And of course, the guy comes walking out and he sees them. And Mike picked up the dumbbells and just started repping them out and set them back on the bench. And I just remember the guy was so perplexed and confused and scared all in one. I think he left. <laughs> I, I think he left for just sheer embarrassment. But that's who Mike was. Mike did not like the jerks. He didn't like people picking on other people. Yeah. He wanted, because he was a fat guy growing up. Yeah. So he turned it around. He had his own story about how he was a, you know, a, a very uh, a, a overweight kid who couldn't participate in certain sports because of his weight. You know, can you imagine telling a kid, you can't play little league football. Yeah. You're too big. Yeah. You have to play soccer. Okay, yeah. so just imagine a guy who's 12 years old, who towers over every other kid, who's carrying a lot of extra weight, and he's got to go play soccer, right? Running around and stuff like that. You know, Mike dealt with that. Yeah. So, you know, in high school, he changed it all around, and he put himself in shape, but he never forgot any of that. He didn't. He didn't forget about his whole childhood, and he was very sensitive to other people knocking other people. You know, so one thing I can say to folks watching this, if you remember Mike and you want to honor Mike, when you're in your gym and you're, uh, you see somebody who looks new, uh, maybe they don't know what they're doing, when you're finished your workout, go over, shake their hand, ask them if they need some help with anything, be an encouragement to them. Yeah. You know, tell them you're glad they're there. And never, never belittle somebody because of where they are on their journey. I know during that 405 over at Press Video I said, Oh, the guys arguing about it are guys who can't do 135. That wasn't a shot on people doing 135. That was a shot on people criticizing another person's thing. No. And uh, that, it, here at our gym, it doesn't matter if you lift 10 pounds or 1,000 pounds. They're as relevant. long as you're giving 100%. Yep. yep. But true. if you're giving 50% or you're being negative or you're, hey, trust us. He's a little older than I am. I'm probably a little older than you are. Most likely, we have been around longer than you have in this game. And the number one thing that I can tell you is there was a time when you were where that person was. Do not belittle 
anyone who is working towards something. And it is not worth it. It is not worth wasting your life. If you are sitting there on the internet criticizing a bunch of people, you're the one getting hurt. Like, you're hurting yourself more than you're hurting anybody Absolutely. else. That type of negativity, it just, it, I swear to you, that's where like cancer comes from. It's like negative, Absolutely. negative stuff, just putting it out there in the universe, continually going, oh, that guy, that guy's doing this, or that guy's doing that, or I could do that too, or whatever. Just worry about yourself, do your own thing. Absolutely. Just like you, you're 48 years old, Everyone thought you were crazy for oh, yeah. doing conditioning and opening this gym and doing all this stuff. Sure. Like, everyone thinks you're crazy. Everyone thinks it's a bad idea. There is no one that is going to support you, plan on that. You may have a very couple few people, and there's going to be a couple people that seem like they support you, but secretly behind your back, they're yeah. going, yeah, yeah. well, that guy, yeah, he's going to he's gonna die on his bike trip, blah, blah, yeah. like. Which is how you can tell it's a good thing. Yeah. If you've turned it around, that's how you know you're doing something cool. Yeah. When, when, when you get all the criticism, the naysayers, the, 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 the ones that spend their whole lives in the stands, never on the field, yeah. that's when you know you're doing a good thing. Yeah. You're taking a step outside the box, and I encourage everybody, doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's weightlifting, bike riding, whatever, yeah. push yourself, take a chance, take a chance, and don't worry about what people say, and don't worry about what they think. I personally, when I see somebody out trying something, whether maybe it's a 5K run and, and, they're, and they're walking, hey man, congratulations. You signed up and you're doing it. Yep. You're doing it. You're not like these other people that are watching. You're doing something. So um, Whether you come in first or last. That is irrelevant. At least you stepped in and you tried. You stepped in and tried. It's the same way with strongman competition. When I signed up for my first strongman competition, <clears throat> I signed up in the novice division and I was standing in, standing there with this you know, red shirt on and uh, I was definitely old enough to be 95% of them's dad. Yep. And um, I actually had this one guy, a real nice kid, he said, excuse me, sir, can I ask you how old you are? I said, sure, I'm 50. And he goes, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I said, that's pretty cool. I said, yeah, yeah, it's, you know, 50 doesn't mean there's, there's no age limit on this kind of stuff. No. And uh, it jump in, it makes some great memories, meets some great people, and um, yeah, it's 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 a blast. And it's leading by example. His his daughter, who is a massive individual in our gym, like she just she is going to be a world beater literally in years. It's she is on a path, right? But she didn't want to work out when she first started coming here. It was it was like pulling teeth every single time to get her to get her to do anything. Yeah. And now she drags me here. Yeah, it's amazing. Like it, yeah. but it's all because he led by example. He didn't say you need to go to the gym and go do that. You said I'm gonna go to the gym. Yep. You come with me. Yep. And then when it came to like working hard, you weren't like, oh, there's bear walks. I'm not doing bear walks. Bear walks are stupid. You said. There's bear walks on the board. I'm gonna do bear walks, which means you're doing bear walks. Let's go together. You know what I mean? And if you're willing to take somebody and mentor them the same way that you mentored me in business, when you do that, it is invaluable. You know what I mean? Yeah. And rather than sitting there ripping down somebody else or doing doing something else or being afraid to take a chance, like just step out. Who cares if you come in last? No one's gonna care. And if they do care, they're gonna care for about two minutes and then they're gonna forget about it. Absolutely. It, all that matters is that you went out there, you had the courage to try, yeah. you did something much cooler on that Saturday than, than sitting on the couch and watching whatever. That's exactly right. And, and you know, people believe what you do, not what you say. Yeah. And, and just get out there and, and do it. Take a risk. If, if you're feeling apprehensive about something, Everybody feels apprehensive. You felt apprehensive. No. Mike felt apprehensive. I mean, Mike, when he signed up for Maryland Strongest Man the first time, he says, well, I, I don't know if I want to embarrass myself. Everybody feels it. It's natural. Yep. It's natural. I, when I signed up for auction school, I just remember thinking to myself, not really sure what the, how this is going to go. I hope they don't put me with a microphone in front of a whole bunch of people. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's, it's behind me now. It was a great experience. I'm glad I did it. So, you know, just just sign sign on the sign up and go 
and get a couple of things behind you. It doesn't matter what it is. Reinvent yourself today because you only get one shot. Absolutely. You've got one shot. Absolutely. And trust me, that shot can end today. That shot can end tomorrow. Yep. yep. So do yep. not waste. Do not wait until you're ready because you're never going to feel ready. Like you said, Mike Jenkins didn't feel ready before his first strongman competition. I never feel ready for my contest. I always go into them going, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You yeah. know what I mean? But that's that's part of it. That's overcoming that fear is what the actual growth comes. Yeah. It, whether you, uh, who was the world's strongest man in 1982? No idea. Yeah. No idea. And that was the strongest person on the planet. Yeah. It doesn't matter that much. What matters is the journey. And the journey all happens in choosing something, sticking to your word, having the courage to follow through, and showing up that day. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, everybody has a history, and, I, and it, it's, I've noticed in talking to people, people love to talk about their past. They love to talk about either their high school football days or their <laughs> college football days or, their, or what they used to do and stuff like that. And it, it always, I always say to them, that's great, man, and that's cool. Why stop? Yeah. You know, there's, there's, it's like we, we live in this world where it's like everybody thinks they have to follow a script. And that is, you know, you, you do really cool things, then you, then you get married, you raise a family, you stop doing cool things, and then, you know, later in life you pick up golf and you start swinging a club, and then after that it comes a shuffleboard, and yeah. then you die. And then you die. Okay? No. 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 Live. As long as you're breathing. Yeah, as long as you're breathing. Make it worth it. Make it worth it. There's no time limit. I mean, I've heard about people in their 70s and in their 80s running marathons. Yep. You know, hey, at 50, they're looking at it like, man, I'm, I'm brand new to this. Yep. You know, 30 years later, they're running a marathon, you yep. know? And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to, I... You're, and you are stronger now than you've ever been in your entire life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it all has to do with not the fact, like a lot of people say like, oh, genetics, blah, 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 whatever. What it has to do with is the fact that you came in with a positive mindset and you said, I'm going to get it done. Absolutely. I just, I, I wish someone would have told me that when I was younger. You know me, what I mean? Me too. Oh, right? Me too. Absolutely. So if you are younger and you're watching this, listen to this man. He is one of the best people on the planet. His words are gold. Stick to it. Dave, I thank you so much for spending this time with me. Thank you. I am so excited for your trip. I am going to miss you terribly. Well, I'm going to miss you too. I'll be, I'll be checking in along the way. And, uh, you know, thanks for the thanks for the conditioning that's uh, giving me the confidence to do something like this. I, awesome, I, I know I can do it. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much. But just like Dave said, until we see you again, go out, do something amazing with your Keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. We're going to check back in with this guy. After his trip, it's going to be amazing. We'll see you later. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.